Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Citizens of Fiji, fellow citizens of Fiji, and former citizens, family of uh, the late Mr. Jairam Reddy, friends. We acknowledge the traditional landowners of this land and the government of New Zealand for allowing us to be here. When I received the news of the passing of Mr. Jairam Reddy, Justice Jairam Reddy, I knew I would come to his funeral here in Auckland. I had journeyed with Mr. Jairam Reddy through a momentous period in Fiji's history. We shared a dream, a dream for our country, a dream that has never died. I wish to honor him. I salute him and I salute his memory and offer again my gratitude for everything he did for Fiji and on behalf of Fiji. I pay my sincere tribute to Justice, to the late Justice Jairam Reddy as well for helping me by his own personal example to develop the democratic instincts that propelled my career in politics. When I first met Mr. Reddy, I was a very new Prime Minister. He was then the leader of the National Federation Party and leader of the opposition. After the coup of 1987, I began to see that the only way for Fiji to kill its own demons and to progress to true nationhood was through democracy. Authoritarianism led to oppression. It leads to abuse of rights. It leads to intolerance. It was not and will never be a recipe for happiness. Democracy was about give and take, seeking common grounds when necessary and abiding by the rule of law. The people were ultimately in charge. They had the power to elect and also the power to remove their government through their vote. Those elected to parliament were accountable to the voters. Mr. Jairam Reddy and I discovered that we both had a commitment, a commitment to constitutional and political transformation. Its purpose was to address and resolve the complexities, the fears, and the divisions of our multi-ethnic society in Fiji. Fiji was still virtually compartmentalized a legacy of our colonial era. We initiated among the members of parliament a constitutional process to write that and move towards complete nationhood. The negotiations were not always easy. As leaders, we were both under pressure 
to stand firm on this or that matter, or to push back on something else. Our overriding role was to guide and encourage our members of parliament to keep the focus on the making of a nation and to counsel patience and flexibility when there was a sticking point. I became aware many years later that at one stage, Mr. Jairam Reddy became angry about something I had said and done. He did not mention it to me, but shared it with a mutual friend who urged him to stay the course. Momentum began to grow, and then finally, we had consensus. We were on the way to formulating a new constitution. I arranged for Mr. Jairam Reddy to address the Great Council of Chiefs, which had great authority among the indigenous peoples of Fiji. Never before had an Indo-Fijian spoken to a formal meeting of the chiefly institution. What transpired on that day, June the 6th, 1997, became an occasion for all ages. The simplicity, the power of Jairam Reddy's words stay with me still, and I'm sure with others as well. The chiefs were moved by his eloquence, but more so by his sincerity. They were convinced of the need for change. Let me share some of the compelling expressions and thoughts uttered by, by Mr. Jaron Reddy to the chiefs on that day, and I quote, in a time which future generations will remember as the defining moment for this country, the grandson of an indentured laborer answers the call of Mbosilebo Vaturang. And together, we keep an appointment with history. He went on to say, the Indians of Fiji brought to these shores as laborers did not come to conquer or to colonize. We, their descendants, do not seek to usurp your ancient rights and responsibilities. We never have. We have no wish, no desire to separate ourselves from you. Fiji is our home. Fiji is our only home. We have no other. We want no other. He continued and said, our ancestors came to this land in search of a better life. In search of a future they dreamed of for their children and their children's children. Though they traveled to these islands long, long after your ancestors, surely the dreams and the hopes of those who landed from the Leonidas were not that different from those who came ashore after their epic earlier journeys from the West. We seek not domination. Indeed, we cannot dominate. 
We are not a majority ethnic group in this multicultural nation. You are. What we seek is partnership. We seek a country whose children of all races grow up with a deep understanding and respect for each other's cultures, languages, and traditions. We seek a country which encourages the best and the brightest. Indeed, a country which encourages all its people of all races to work together. We seek not to threaten, threaten your security, but to protect it. For in your security lies the basis of our own. End of quote. Jairam Reddy spoke well about the country. He spoke as well about a country that was living in fear. With the indigenous Fijians being afraid for their identity and their way of life. Of, it being, of them being dispossessed and swamped by migrants. The indo Fijians, on the other hand, and to some extent other communities, were afraid of always being second-class citizens, condemned to be perpetual, to perpetual insecurity in the place of their birth, doomed to be the eternal Wulani. With these and other comments, Jairam went on to the heart of the issue facing Fiji and sealed his place in our history. Before his address to the Council of Chiefs, support for the draft constitution among the Fijians was falling short. When Mr. Jaram Reddy finished, I asked the great Council of Chiefs for their endorsement of the draft. The entire great Council of Chiefs, whole, the whole Council, all 14 provinces, not the, only, not the six that agreed with the draft, all 14 provinces and Rotuma unanimously agreed. In the House of Representatives, the proposed constitution gained unanimous support and became Fiji Supreme Law. With Fiji's return to constitutional respectability, the country came in from the cold and was readmitted to the Commonwealth. I had to address the organization's head of government meeting in Scotland in, 1988, in 1998. At my invitation, Mr. Reddy spoke to those world leaders in my place. I wish to underscore what we had achieved together in repairing our damaged homeland and setting in on course for happiness, unity, and prosperity. In the elections of 1999, our joint endeavors of Fiji were rejected by the voters we love. Mr. Reddy lost his parliamentary seat, and my party was badly defeated. I remember that when I moved the motion for the Constitution Amendment Bill in the House of Representatives, I had quoted something that Bishop Desmond Tutu had said. He made a statement to the fact that sometimes compromise, compromise might, might not be enough. In those circumstances, he said, it was necessary to dig deeper and make sacrifices rather than compromises. Both Jairam and I 
sacrificed our parliamentary careers. When I left President Sir Mara's office, the morning I acknowledged defeat, I told the reporters outside that constitution was worth losing an election for. I had no regrets about the dream Jaron Reddy and I had. and what we have achieved. He trusted me, and I trusted him. The new pact between my party and the People's Alliance, of the People's Alliance and the National Federation Party, led by Professor Biman Prasad, is a renewal of this era of what Mr. Jairam Reddy started. And this time, we will realize that dream. I say in my final farewell now to a man I was very proud to know. Go well, my friend. Sulueti, my family and I, extend sincere condolences to Mrs. Reddy and your family. Thank you all very much. God bless you.